What is true identity? If everything that we do flows from who we believe we are in our heart, then who you believe you are in your heart matters. If you believe that you are a failure, you will absolutely act like a failure, although that's not the DNA of your Father God, who is in heaven. He is the Father of lights. In Him is no darkness. In Him is no failure. And when you see things from His perspective, everything changes. It's like the eyes of your heart are just flooded with light, and then you have hope suddenly, and you know what you're called to, you know what you want to do, and what you were created to do. And there's something about just the reality of his kingdom in being in sonship. I don't want to be with him, but not be conscious of it, and be with him and not know what that really means and what he has really purchased for me. I want to know the spiritual reality of why he has created me and what he has placed in me. So how do I know my identity in him? First of all, by knowing the things of the spirit. You're knowing you're born again. That is the absolute starting place. And the reality of the born again spirit is a basic that many don't even get yet. I mean, it's it's so much to be unpacked. I mean, you can spend all eternity on it. So with the born again spirit, your spirit dies and then it's recreated in Christ and joined with Holy Spirit. And when that happens, you have access to all the revelation and all the knowledge and all the mysteries of God. They're unveiled and they're no longer hidden from your spirit. So that's why when somebody says something out of the spirit of revelation, you know it's right. It's like you just have an absolute knowing about it. It's just like an aha moment. It's remembering something you think you've forgotten, but you really knew all along. And so I, I want to see things from his perspective about where I am in him. Because when I try to focus on me fixing something, I doing something, it just, it doesn't work very well. So when I start focusing on what he has already done, then I enter into the eternal dimension. In the eternal dimension, you could pull things that are from the future into the present. Because everything is in the now. So where does faith come into this whole thing? Faith comes into this by knowing who did it. By trusting in him. Who made it. And since he made it, we could step into it. Because we have his faith, because we're in him. So everything we do flows out of him. And the things that we try to do that are not flowing in him, just, they disintegrate. They won't even hold up. And I noticed too, like, how to tell something is God or how to tell something that is of the kingdom of the light is just focusing on spirit revelation. When it's not just a good mental idea, but where it just hits you like, wow, that's amazing. And then it's almost sometimes like a domino effect in, your, in you with the connection of the scriptures. Because that's the whole word of truth. It's rightly dividing the whole word of truth. So that's how you know that you got the right interpretation of scripture. Because sometimes people could have all these different ideas, but they're all using Bible verses. But then when you try to put their ideas together, it all seems to contradict, although it's all using the same Bible. It's because it's the wrong understanding of the Bible. 
Yes, yeah, so God is not going to violate his word, but sometimes he'll violate our understanding of the word. But sometimes um, the hardest mental strongholds are those that we think are scriptural, but are actually aren't scriptural at all. And so those things that aren't scriptural at all, but appear scriptural are just a religious spirit. And the religious spirit um, focuses primarily on knowledge without experience. Like, for example, with Jesus, he was talking to the Pharisees. He's saying... Um, you won't even allow other people to go and you won't go in yourselves. I mean, you're not doing anything. You're just, you have a mental assent to knowledge, but you have no revelation. And so revelation is really an invitation to experience his presence and experience an aspect of his character, maybe that you have not entered into before. And when you enter into that aspect of his character, everything changes and everything shifts. Because God is the only one who knows how it will work from the end to the beginning. So he's got like the full track record about how it's going to work. Because without that record of how it's going to work, what we see now is finite. But what he sees is infinite. So when we look at things from his perspective, we see how his way works so much better than the infinite just the demonic or worldly way of thinking. <coughs> so when you think from his way, he is the orchestrator, he is the creator, he is the manufacturer of us. So when we see things from his perspective, he shows us how it works from the end to the beginning. And then in him, he is by our faith, by our stepping out in action, which is motivated by love for him, because faith works by love, then these things are brought into manifestation on the earth. When these things are brought into manifestation on the earth, our entire perspective of it changes into seeing things from the heavenly realm. Because it says to set your mind on the things above and not on the things of this earth. I think that's Philippians 4, 7. So that tells us that it's possible to be in a constant flow of revelation. Just because I'm, I'm not always in that constant flow of revelation doesn't mean that he hasn't paved the way for me to enter into that. So by entering into that, I practice but what he has given me. He has given me Holy Spirit, but he has also given me a mind. So the point of the mind is to yield to the Spirit. Because you need your mind. The mind is the vessel which the Spirit flows through, oftentimes. The mind does not need to be get to gotten rid of but it just needs to be renewed because even like sometimes um when i'm speaking and i'm having thoughts come to me they're not thoughts out of my brain they're thoughts out of the spirit but my brain is merely like the playground that the spirit uses but oftentimes i will start arguing with the thought and i say oh i don't know how it's scriptural or blah 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 and Really, it's my, my mind needs to be renewed to the right understanding of the scripture, dividing the whole word of truth, so that I may operate by the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that my eyes of my heart would be enlightened, that I would know that the hope that I'm called to, I would know the riches, the glory, the inheritance, and the saints, because many people, they think it is prideful to say that I have an inheritance or that I have a right to see the kingdom, or I have a right to see heaven, or I have a right to see the future, or I have the right to the knowledge of Christ. But really, all it is is just inheritance. That he has given me everything, that he did not even spare his own son. So I have everything in heavenly places. So then when I start tuning myself to that reality, I start experiencing that because what you put your eyes on, you get. Just like when you're running a race, um, you're looking ahead, you're not looking behind you. And you're going to get ahead because that's where you're looking and that's where you're moving. And moving is the action of faith. And how you stay persistent in that is remembering what's at the end. Or who's at the end in this case. And so when you realize that Christ is your prize, there is such a joy. There is such a joy in knowing him. He is the incomparable riches. In him, everything is held together. 
In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. You know, even that quote, in him I live and move and have my being, that wasn't even a Christian quote. It was something taken from the secular world that I believe Paul quoted. It's amazing, even somebody that isn't born again, every once in a while they'll get snippets of revelation. So you have to keep your ears peeled for the truth, or eyes peeled, I guess. For him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So when we strip away everything that hinders, when we strip away the fear of man entirely, then we only have one focus. And the focus is simple as a choice. I choose to focus on Christ, for he is my life. Without him, I am nothing. Without him, I can do nothing. When you realize that, you submit to him. You enter into an utter place of peace and rest. You submit to him, and automatically it counteracts the devil. You're resisting the devil, and he will flee. Because Satan hates rest, the rest of God, that is. Because the whole point of the dominion of darkness is to get you to come into agreement with it. So if you come into agreement by fear, that gives in place. If you come into agreement with bitterness, that gives in place. But if you come into agreement with peace and you focus on the Prince of Peace, if you come into agreement with love and you focus on the one who is love, suddenly all those other things fall away. Suddenly when you're, also what you've been seeing is demonic, it's like your eyes are lifted above that, where right? then you just start seeing the angelic, you start seeing the glory of God. Then it's easy to receive from him. It's easy to look into his eyes.